Hey everyone, it's Night Haro here, and today I've got an up updated build guide for those who are larcenously inclined. This is a Nightblade build guide to help you be able to uh, steal from guards and make a decent amount of gold by stealing and picking pockets and doing that kind of thing. I will note that this build guide is, is not a DPS build guide, so if you're looking for like what, what weapons to use, what skills to use to do damage and stuff like that, I have plenty of those on the channel. Just go to the DPS guide section. The, that playlist and you'll be able to find plenty of Nightblade builds there for you. Some that are one bar, two bar, you know, more advanced, etc., etc. Basic gear, crafted gear, to trial gear. Everything that you need is, is probably there. So um, <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know, of course. But for this build guide, what you're going to do is take your normal build, whatever you've been using, or if you're using one of my builds, and then you're going to modify it a little bit. So let's go ahead and start off here with talking about probably one of the most important things, which is gear. So the one set that you absolutely need to have is going to be Darlock Bray. This drops from elsewhere, and you can get it overland, you can get it from some of the quest lines, you can get some of the weapons and stuff like that. You can also go purchase it from a trader. I would note that this shouldn't cost very much, it's pretty easy to get. So if you see something for sale for you know 45k for like a chess piece or something, uh, I, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> Personally, you can find it for pretty cheap and especially when you know events will happen and stuff like that. But uh, you can go farm this yourself also if you're kind of the person who likes to do that because it's just fun to run around overland. And I'll talk about how best to do that. But Darlock Bray, you want five pieces, you want it always active, and you can put it on anywhere. All the sets that I'm gonna tell you today, it, it really doesn't matter about like, oh, what's on your head, what's on your chest, whatever. As long as you can fit all these pieces on, you're gonna be just fine, it doesn't really matter. The second set, you have two choices. Uh, so one of them is gonna be Night Terror, and you only need three pieces of this. And the reason you, you want that, similar to Darlock Bray, and I'm sorry, I guess I should tell you why you want Darlock Bray. Darlock Bray, uh, while you're stealth, gives you a bunch of regeneration, both mag, uh, stamina and also health. Uh, but the main thing is the mag and stamina, so you can stay permanently stealth all the time. This build also is great for farming. I'm going to do a separate farming video, but if, honestly, if you watch this, you'll pretty much be good to go, uh, besides a few tips and tricks, I guess. So uh, the five piece bonus gives you all those regenerations. I believe it's the four piece bonus that also reduces your stealth detection radius. So we're gonna have a lot of stuff that reduces our stealth detection radius, and it ends up being so good that you can literally jump on guards. <laughs> and they won't be able to see you. Now, if you're actually going to pick pockets and stuff like that, they they can still detect you. Um, but as far as like accidentally being found out, you'll have zero chance if you go if you go full on with everything that I'm recommending. And as long as you're a Khajiit. if you're not, you can get it to where it's like tiny. So the only way you can be found out is if you accidentally run into a guard and face forward. <laughs> Sometimes you can even still run to the back room. So you don't have to be a Khajiit. You don't have to have all these things, but I'm just telling you, you know, what's the most optimal, right? That's that's the whole idea. And if you find you don't need some of this, that's fine. Just don't use it. So yeah, Darlock Bray gives you those regeneration, which is what we really want. And then also reduces our stealth detection radius, which is huge. We want that. Night Terror, also the three piece bonus, which is why you only need three pieces, will give you Similarly, uh, a reduced two meter detection radius. And these things aren't additive. Um, you know, they seem to be multiplicative, but you can get it basically down to close enough to zero. So Night Terror two piece, you can go with that. If you are not a vampire and are not interested in becoming a vampire, then instead of running Night Terror, what I would actually recommend is Night Silence. This is a crafted set. And all it does is it allows you the five piece bonus. So you do want to go full five piece on this. Um, what it allows you to do is to have no movement penalty whenever you're stealthed. So normally when you're stealth, you have a 40% movement penalty. So you go from 100% of your movement to 60%. So it's pretty significant. And if you're a vampire, there's a passive. It's one of the first ones you get that will allow you to completely ignore that. But if you don't want to be a vampire because RP purposes or whatever, then you can just use Night Silence. Uh, I will also note that becoming a vampire, if you have any questions about it, uh, ask. You don't need to buy it from the crown store. It's free. People will help you out. Um, you know, you can ask in a guild. People will help you out. Or you can even ask Overland. People will help you out to become a vampire if, you, if you're fine with it and you want to. Um, but Night Silence is what you do if, you, if you're not going to be a vampire. And then the last thing here is the Ring of the Wild Hunt. Now, you don't have to do this. And obviously, when you first start out, you, you know, you won't have this. Um, but the Ring of the Wild Hunt gives you an extra 45%. It's actually 52% because it's 45% from the ring. And then it's all, it's made in swift. So that's another 7%. So it's 52% speed increase, which is crazy. Uh, because, so if you think of your base movement as being 100, 100%, and then you add 52, you can only go up to 200. At 200%, you're, you're capped out. 
anything above that doesn't speed you up. For, for mounted, you can go up to 250, but for just regular movement, uh, overlay not mounted, 200. So it puts you over half the way there just with that one item. So it's just too good. It's a mythic. You do need to go farm it and do all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's just so good that I can't not recommend it. There are other things. I will talk about some other things that'll, that'll increase your speed. I will also note that you can get too fast. <laughs> if you're at full 200% movement cap, sometimes whenever you're like trying to get right behind somebody, you like tap the move button and you like fly over. So <laughs> there, there's also a handful of things you can you can do as well so that you're not too fast. <laughs> All right, and, and, and then after that, uh, for our quick slide items, so you can use, you know, specific kind of potions for invisibility and stuff like that. You're not really going to need it. Uh, the main thing I would just do is have trash, and I say trash, like those cheap overland potions you get that most people just vendor, of Magicka primarily, especially if you're a stamina build, or and or stamina. And being able to switch between the two can be helpful at times. The main ones you're gonna need now, you know, at, at the current state of the game is gonna be Magicka, because a lot of your skills to make sure you stay invisible and to increase your speed if you're trying to run around quickly are gonna be magic based. So just keep that in mind. I do recommend being a Khajiit. Khajiit is the best way to go. And the reason for that is because of the racial passives. You have two that are important. One is it increases your chances of pickpocketing successfully by 5%. And while that's not, you know, the end of the world, uh, it's nice to have. Uh, the other one that is even more helpful, but again, you don't need it. You don't have to be a Khajiit. So if you, if you really like playing some other race, totally do that. Or if you're trying to optimize for DPS, so you want to go like a Nightblade or some other class uh, or some other race, rather, like High Elf or something that's good for whatever your build is, that's also totally fine. So don't, don't worry about it. But the other thing is you can reduce your detection radius by three meters from racial passives. So that's also crazy. <laughs> so we have Darlock Bray, Knight's Terror, and then we've got being a Khajiit to reduce our detection radius. And we actually have more stuff we'll stack in if you want. <laughs> if you don't want to be Khajiit, any other race is, is basically equal. Just do whatever's best for you for your normal build um, if you're not building specifically for stealing. Now let's go ahead and move into champion points, which is uh, going to also help us out. There's a lot of really good champion points in the green skill tree, so let's go ahead and talk about those and go through them. And there's also some, some that you would think are good that are not. <laughs> So let's talk about it. All right, so first up here is gonna be out of sight. Out of sight, it reduces your stealth detection radius from one to three meters. So uh, depending on how many CPU you have, and it's up to a three meter reduction. This is another one of those things we're stacking in addition to our armor, in addition to racial passives, if we decide to go that direction, that just makes it easier, easier for us to, to, to not get caught. So uh, that's why you want out of sight. And it's not even slottable. You don't even have to slot it. So there's no reason not to grab this. It's really low in the tree, you can grab it really quickly too. Next up is going to be Infamous. Infamous increases the value of items that we sell, that we've stolen. They, there's nothing else to do with them. You just vendor them. And it increases that amount by 25%. So an extra quarter. It's pretty huge. And then the next one is Cut Purse's Art. And this increases the quality of items that we get when we're stealing. So white items, which is the lowest quality, sell for 40 gold a piece. And then it goes up from there for at, at 100 and then 250, and then you can get some items that are worth a thousand, which if you have everything that I'm gonna show you on this build, you'll, you'll usually get like one of those. If, you know, doing a full round, stealing as much as you can so that, you know, for your daily allotment of how much you can sell to the fence, um, you'll end up getting usually one of those items, which is cool. And it's increased by another 25% uh, of the, the sell price. So so those those are the two main slottable CP. This the last two are slottable, and then that third one is not, that I absolutely recommend you grab. Now, there's gonna be some others here that we'll all go ahead and talk about, just because we're here, might as well talk about it. But I will note that those are the only ones you absolutely need or that I strongly recommend. And there's some that are a trap, so we'll talk about those in a second. A couple of others that look and might be kind of useful one is friends in low places. So what this allows you to do once per day, whenever you're out, you know, doing your thing and you get a bounty, it will remove up to a thousand gold pieces worth of a bounty. Um, I don't typically use this or find it super useful because after a while, you'll never have to pay bounties. Actually, kind of almost right off the way, off the bat. I have a video on, on and uh, probably more than one, but I have at least one on how to get away from guards. If you follow this video, it's super easy. So you, you kind of end up just not needing it. It's kind of like, ah, and there's better things and other things you might want to put in that place. It's not bad. It's just that there are better things and you kind of don't need it, so. Uh, next one is sustaining shadows. It increases, or I'm sorry, reduces rather the cost of sneak by up to 50%. 
Again, same thing as if you follow everything else, you're just not gonna need this. Darlock Bray gives you a lot of recovery and you know, you've got potions and stuff like that that you're probably not even gonna need, but you probably just don't need this skill, but you could use it if you are having problems for whatever reason. You're leveling or something, you don't have Darlock Bray yet, uh, you could grab it. Uh, next one is Fleet Phantom. This re reduces the uh, movement penalty of Sneak by 25%. This is a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. So the movement penalty we mentioned before is 40% and this reduces it by 25%. So your movement speed goes from 60% to 70%. So it's, it looks a lot and it sounds a lot better than it actually is. I would totally, if you don't have any sets and you're not a vampire, you don't want to become a vampire or something, yeah, you, you could take this, um, but you again, you really just don't need it. You want to use either the set uh, that I recommended, the Night Silent set, or become a vampire and then you don't have to worry about it at all. And you can get anybody to craft you that Night Silent set. It can be level one. It doesn't even matter. I mean, you should probably get an appropriate level for you as best you can, but it, it's super easy, super cheap. And um, so I just wouldn't take this. I will also note, if you take this CP, sometimes it bugs out with some of the other skills and it mostly fixed itself, but there were times when this seemed to be kind of superseding <laughs> Night Silence or the passive from the, the Vampire skill line. And so uh, it was making me slower than otherwise would be. So another reason to avoid it, but just FYI. Uh, more skills that I, I wouldn't really recommend. One is Shadow Strike. Um, this one is, everybody, we're all like scratching our heads about this one. So you, it turns you invisible after you use Blade of Woe, but after a second. So it doesn't help you not get caught. doesn't help you not get a bounty. Um, and it, it sure, it turns you invisible, but you have an ability that does that. And some people are like, oh, it helps you do this on a non-Nightblade class. Kind of, not really. It, it's so bad that it really doesn't, uh, to be honest with you, because you, it's not like you use your Blade of Woe and then like, and then and then you instantly go invisible. If you've been caught, you've been caught. Otherwise, you can just go into stealth normally. So anyways, it just doesn't make sense to me, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's a CP. <laughs> uh, generically good CP in this tree. Uh, Treasure Hunter increases the quality of items that you find from chess. This can be helpful because if you have a low quality item, you'll, you'll find these whenever you're running around and uh, it'll just increase the quality and it also can make it where there's a chance or a better chance of you finding a set from that zone that you might wanna be collecting. So if you're doing that, um, and also it can give you better swag. A uh, meticulous disassembly. This just helps you whenever you're deconning things to get more mats out of it. It's better for purple, you know, jewelry and gold jewelry and gold anything. Um, but also not really needed. I just pointed it out here. And those are both slottable CPs. There is also, if you're, if you're someone who likes to loot everything, every urn, every box or whatever, um, homemaker will is actually, you know, not horrible. Um, <laughs> What this does, it gives you a 10% chance whenever you find a furnishing in, out in the world. It gives you a 10% chance to find a second one. Now, that sounds really cool. It's like, oh, cool, if I find one, I got a 10% chance to find a second one. The thing is, most of the drop chance on those are usually like 1% or even lower. So a 10% chance to, to double that. The math, the way that works out is you go, if it's 1%, you go to like a 1.1%. So it's really small and you do have to slot it and there's probably something else you'd want to put there instead, but it is an option. Just know it's there. So, you know, d do what you will. If you're someone who likes to loot all the urns and everything, then absolutely I would grab it. Uh, after that, let's go ahead and talk about skills here. So there's only a handful of skills that you really want and there's almost none that you absolutely need, uh, but concealed weapon will give you minor expedition when it's on your bar. So that will increase your movement speed by 15%. So this is one of those things where I told you you can be too fast. Since it's on a bar, it's active when you're on that bar, you can bar swap so that you don't have it active to slow yourself down a little bit and that can be very helpful. You could also one bar your night silence set if you're running that so that whenever you swap to one of your bars, you don't have the benefit to also further slow yourself down. Although you might find it's too slow, so keep that in mind. Uh, next up is gonna be Shadowy Disguise. Shadowy Disguise is, it's the thing where you're like, <laughs> and, and you turn nearly invisible, it, it turns you invisible so people can't see you. Um, this is the quintessential Nightblade skill for being able to do all this kind of stuff and being able to do it easily. So it's really nice whenever you're running away, you hit that, 
pop a, pop a speed boost and you can run away from guards if you happen to get caught. I will note that using this will not prevent you from being detected while you're doing thieving activities like picking a pocket or uh, if you're using Blade of Woe or something like that, just because you're technically invisible, if you do one of those things in the side of where someone would normally be able to see you, they'll still be able to see you. This just helps them not being able to, guards not being able to see you primarily. And then after that, I'm going to recommend Race Against Time for Major Expedition. So we're just trying to get to movement cap here. You don't have to be, but just, just know about it. So Race Against Time, the reason we like this skill is it's from the Psijic skill line, so you do have to level it up. I think you only have to get to like level three, so it's not too bad. And the reason we like this is because when you cast it, it doesn't break you out of stealth. Uh, our, our path, either Morph, the Healing Morph, or uh, Path of Darkness for DPS, those both take you out of, out of stealth. Most other, like other class skills, um, even in non-class skills, all of them, as far as, as far as I know, there might be one, but as far as I know, all of them break you out of stealth. So this is the only skill in the game that can give you that major expedition, which is a 30% speed increase without also breaking you out of stealth. So what you can do if you get caught and there's a guard chasing you is you use your shadowy disguise and then you pop race against time and you take off running and you can run away from guards and they can't catch you. You're invisible and then you can run fast enough. They will throw a flare to reveal you, but you'll be able to outrun them. And that is it for our active skills that we're actually gonna put on our bar. Let's talk about some of the passives that are really helpful for us. So from the Ledger Domain skill line, and, and I also, <laughs> I should note this, I pronounce that like an American, Ledger Domain, that's how we say it. I, I realize there's probably a better way to say it, um, but that's a word that we've taken from French and, and made it an English word, and that's how we pronounce it now. <laughs> I'm sorry if, if there's someone who, out there who's like French is like, oh my God, you're butchering my language. Um, that's just the way we say it. So uh, <laughs> ledger domain skills here. Uh, so light fingers. Light fingers, what this does is it, it increases your chance of successfully pickpocketing by up to 50%. So this is huge because what you'll find is that there will be some mobs like nobles or, or kind of like the top tier of mob and they have the best loot table. So you get the most purple and blue items from nobles. Typically, you can get it from other other you know mobs and stuff like that. And then if you have something like a drunkard or whatever, uh, and they're, they're literally called that. I'm, I'm not call, name calling. That's what they're called in the game. Uh, you have drunkards uh, or you know other people like that who have a lower loot table. They don't have much in their pocket, I guess. Um, those will be easier to pickpocket. So if you want those high tier items, you'll want to make sure that you max out this skill. So that's why you want that here. And then trafficking. Trafficking is important because it increases the number of items you can sell per day. So you're, you're capped on how many items you can actually sell to the fence per day, and this will increase it. I think up to like about 140, I think, is, is what it ends up when it's maxed. So uh, getting these leveled up is really important and will make your stealing experience a lot easier. After that, we have the Dark Brotherhood skill line. So Shadowy Supplier is actually uh, the only one that I really recommend from this. There are some other ones here that are kind of interesting or whatever. They're not really going to help you actually steal, so they're kind of outside of the scope of this. Uh, but Shadowy Supplier is is cool. It's also very optional, but once per day you can go to any Thieves Guild area and or Outlaws Refuge rather, um, both both apply, and you can you can find someone there who will typically be near near your typical vendor, your fence, and uh, they'll give you one item. And sometimes what that is is a disguise you can put on, and for like five minutes it'll give you a buff. Where even if you have a bounty. Uh, people will treat you as if you didn't. So this can be helpful if you're messing around uh, or you messed up and you've got a bounty or whatever and you just want to be able to run to like a vendor or something and be able to interact with someone while you're bounty and you're waiting for it to cool down. So that can be kind of nice and you can get, you know, invisibility potions and a few other things in there. It's just kind of fun swag and it's actually cool enough that uh, I want to mention it here. After that, Thieves Guild skill line, uh, there's haggling. This will increase your sell price to, to the fence by up to 10%. So we had 25% we can get from the CP, and then we got another 10% we can get here. So again, increases our, our margins quite a bit. And then Veil of Shadows. This reduces your, your stealth detection radius. This is not huge, um, but it actually reduces your radius of people noticing when you're pickpocketing or blade of woeing. And there is, this is the only thing in the game that will do that. It's not huge, uh, but it's nice. And again, it's the only thing in the game that will actually do that. All, everything else reduces them being able to see you. This reduces them being able to see you commit a crime. So even when we get our stealth detection radius to like zero, 
if we still pickpocket in front of somebody, they'll still be able to see us just as well. They just can't, they can't break us out of stealth, basically. Um, which is still really nice and still helpful with the whole thing, but this is a pretty cool skill. And then after that, we have the Vampire skill line, and, and the passive that you want is Dark Stalker. And you only need to put one point into it. Uh, you can put a second. I think it reduces the cost of stealth, but the, the putting one point in will, will completely remove your penalty uh, for movement while stealthed. So uh, pretty huge. Now, uh, that is it for the build. There's a couple of really important things, though, here we need to talk about. So your ledger domain determines helps determine how good of quality items you get. So having a ma maxed out ledger domain will give you a lot less white items and then a lot more blue and purple. And when I am actually stealing, I use an add-on. You can there's several bag add-ons or you can just do it manually, but after a while once you have all this stuff maxed out, I throw away white items because they're 40 gold and blue are up to 100. So it's over, you know, it's two and a half times as good, and so I don't even sell because I can easily pick a lot of items and and up to my max per day. And so I just I just throw away the white items that are trash to me. But to do that, you need to make sure that your ledger domain is maxed out. A lot of people don't know that. It's a hidden mechanic in the game. I wish they told you about it, but it's there. So sometimes I've recently I've gotten a few comments, both good and bad, where people were like, hey, uh, you said I would get 40,000. I got way more than that. I got a Praxis worth 400,000. I got another uh, item worth, you know, 15 or another like a uh, Praxis or something. Um, worth like 15k and then you know I got like you know 20k worth of items that I just sold or vendored or whatever and you know you won't always get that it, it's it's a numbers game right some of these things are kind of rare drops but if you do it enough on average you can make a ton of gold and making sure that you have your ledger domain maxed out and making sure you have these things that will increase the not only the number of items but the the price you'll get when you do vendor them is crucial to making sure you get those, those max numbers. Other than that, whenever you get something like a prax praxis or a motif or something like that, there's not a ton in the game. I wish there were I wish there were way more. It's 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 kind of unfortunate. But I've got some guides on the channel for where to go steal. They're old, they're probably not that great. I, I hopefully I've improved my quality, but they'll tell you where to go and you can get some items that are worth a lot of gold. And the other and the and the most fun thing I think about this is to go and see what you can find. Find and make your own route so that you can go steal. And you can get stuff worth a lot of gold that you can only get that way, or it's very rare to get any other way. And uh, yeah, anyways, it can be a very lucrative thing for you. So yeah, keep that in mind. The other thing is that if you're not on PCNA, PCNA, like inflation is crazy. It's worse than pretty much all the other, um, it is worse all the, than all the other platforms. I'm sure PCEU is also bad, but inflation is really bad because a lot of people buy gold. And so, you know, then the, the value of the items that you vendor kind of by comparison is less because gold is worth less, but the items, the, the actual like practices and the motifs and other stuff you can get like that are worth even more. So just realize that it's gonna vary a little bit if you're like on Xbox or PlayStation or something like that. Just realize, you know, that you'll still get the same amount, you know, that I get uh, selling, vendoring items. Just realize you're gonna get less from some of the other stuff. So your mileage may vary, but you can make uh, quite a bit of money. And whenever I calculated this like a long time ago, I think I came up with like 40, 40K in like half an hour. Or, yeah, I think that's right. 40K and half hour, I think that's what I have on my Alinor. Um, that's that was conservative. Uh, I think that's still true. And again, when you know, depending on how many practices and other kind of motifs and stuff like that you get, you can actually make a lot more than that. I will also note if you want to use this exact build, you can use this to go farm, to go gather, and you can run around in stealth permanently. And you can make sure that you're, you can constantly, you'll be hitting every four seconds race against time to make sure you're sped up, but you can run right up to mobs and they have a little bit more of a detection radius than your average citizen in Tamriel apparently. Uh, but unless you're running into the mob, it won't aggro on you. So you can run around and pick and not have to worry about being bothered by mobs. So a really great gathering build and Nightblades do it the best. I'm gonna do a separate build where I talk, or a separate video where I talk more about gathering and stuff like that, kind of for everybody, but Nightblades do it best. But anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.